morning or is it early afternoon? I think it's almost that time. My schedule is still out of whack from last week and uh, I started my day later again today because I was looking at my recaps and I'm like, oh, I don't have that much drive time anyway. It's fine, I won't be going too late. But I think I just didn't do the math right because <laughs> I should have probably started a little sooner. I should have contacted the place where I was getting live unloaded to see if I could have gotten in earlier because I probably could have. I don't know why I did that. Hopefully I'll be able to get going a little earlier tomorrow. I think my brain is sort of in this weird like vacation mode because I don't know how to explain it, but because people have had like it was a holiday weekend and there's different traffic patterns and like your brain just shifts and then I'm also still adjusting to coming back from mountain time. So that kind of threw me a little bit, but I'm at a place I've picked up before and it's the kind of place where you have to call on a phone that's in the office and give them all the information and then they tell you what door to get into. It's kind of congested so it's going to be a little tricky getting to my door, but I'll get over there. Uh, and the guy was, it was really funny because the guy was super nice and we had this whole long conversation. I was like, oh, he's really talkative. Usually they're pretty like gruff and they're like, you know, trying to get you in and out real quick. But this guy was like, he was chatty and it was fun. I didn't mind it. We were talking about all kinds of trucking stuff and he was talking about, uh, I had told him what company I used to work for because I think I might have accidentally said that company instead of the one I'm at. Or maybe it's because I saw that company's trucks here and so I said it. I don't know. And he was like, which company did you say again? I was like, oh yeah, I used to work for those guys. He's like, oh, why'd you leave? Is the money, you know, better money or whatever? And I was like, money's not really much better, but I didn't want to be driving east and this time, you know, this company, I get to go west. And so we <laughs> launched this whole conversation, but I just thought it was funny. I dropped my sunglasses, man. All right, so now I'm getting loaded in Wisconsin and uh, that had a different meaning for a lot of people yesterday. <laughs> uh, holiday weekend. Um, that always, it's weird how that can throw you off even when you still work through the holiday because the rhythms of everyone around you are different. And every time you stop at a rest area, or not a rest area, you stop at like a gas station or whatever, there's like all these people in there like, you're like, where did these people come from? Go back to your lives. This is, these are my haunts. Uh, but I'm making a shake real quick. Dang, I'm almost out of kefir. Oh, I get loaded. I saw another one of our drivers here and I said hi to him and he gave me a dirty look. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's really unusual. Most of the other drivers I run into are super nice. Uh, maybe he was having a bad day. We're gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. Whenever there's only a little bit of kefir left because there's so much that stays in the bottle that clings to the bottle, I just take some of my OJ that's gonna go on the shake anyway and I use that to like get the rest of it out of the bottle, um, like to get my money's worth. So I'm making a nice little shake. These, this shaker cup is so small though. This is, I think it's 20 ounces or 18 ounces probably by the time I fill it. So I'm putting some kefir, some uh, fresh OJ. Uh, I'm gonna put avocado, frozen uh, banana, frozen strawberries, and a little bit of that frozen, this frozen coconut puree I have. And I think that's it. Although I did buy this hemp protein. I love hemp protein. I love hemp seeds, chia seeds, all that stuff. And I was like, oh, that was one of the ingredients I always used to put in my shakes that I'm missing. Hemp seed is one of my favorite things to put in shakes. Um, ooh, a little bumpy there. Hopefully it won't uh, knock my stuff over. We don't want that. But um, I want to say I did get some really great tips from viewers about how to you know, to like put your landing gear down when you uh, are gonna have an unload, like a long unload. I'm definitely gonna do that. I didn't do it today. I didn't even put my tandems back because uh, they, they said not to bother. I definitely wanna maximize my time today so I didn't wanna add any steps like putting the landing gear down. They said, put your landing gear down and dump the air out of the airbags. I was like, okay, I'm gonna try that one of these times, especially when I have a longer load or unload um, getting yeah, I said I was getting loaded. I already said that. <laughs> but no, I really appreciated the pointers. I also appreciated that people were not mad for me ranting a little bit and were kind of appreciative. <laughs> I'll gladly rant on the behalf of myself and others because, yeah, it's okay to be annoyed by things that are totally uncool. Oh, I'm going to put some uh, of this mushroom stuff. I always forget I have this. Ten mushroom species, three botanical adaptogens. Good stuff. Throw this in my shake. I am totally gonna have more coffee today though. I'm gonna treat myself. This is iced coffee season, man, and I am all about it. So yeah, I'm heading down to, as one of my viewers put it, misery. 
<laughs> with the weather I'm gonna encounter down there, which is, you know, the approximate temperature is swamp ass, no matter what the temperature is. I'm not really looking forward to it. I did get a shower last night, but I haven't had one yet today, and I'm hoping that I will be able to find a stop, but the area that I'm, the, the path that I'm taking doesn't look like there's a whole lot of places that are good to stop. So fingers crossed I'll find something before my end of day. I'm not even going to make it down to St. Louis with the time I have left today, which is fine by me because that means I will get up earlier tomorrow, try to hopefully get done a little early. I think I'm just going to try to like make today a little bit shorter and just run hard tomorrow because tomorrow I'll, I think I'm recapping 11 hours so I'll have a full clock for sure. That's the thing. I had a full clock today. I don't know what I'm thinking. My brain is just kind of in vacation mode and it's partly because this weekend, I'm letting all the cool air out of my little fridge here, this weekend I'm going to see one of my most favorite podcasts do their live show. I talked with my little brother yesterday who's, he's got a perpetual attitude. I love him very much. He'll never watch this so it doesn't matter what I say about him but I'm not going to say anything terrible. <laughs> but he's got an attitude. He's, he's very like, he's very strong opinions. Uh, and he doesn't care what you think. And I kind of love that about him, but he can be a little abrasive about things sometimes. But he very politely tried to say, like, why the hell would you go see a live version of a podcast? He was, like, clearly <laughs> trying not to insult me, but also wanting to be like, you're an idiot. Uh, no, I'm going to see Obituary Live in Chicago. I'm so excited. So I'll, I'm going to talk a little bit more in this video. I'll make another clip when I'm not getting jostled and when I'm not trying to make a shake and not let it fall over. I feel like I have to keep a hand on this thing so it doesn't go flying. But I'll, I'll make a little clip talking about some of my favorite things to listen to while I drive. And I would love to hear other people's favorite things to listen to because if you're one of those people who loves to be entertained and learn new things while you're driving, it's like if my body can't be active, at least I want my brain to be active and entertained. Podcasts are great. I love audiobooks too. But it's funny how it makes you feel like the world is a little bit smaller in a good way because you will be listening and you're nodding along and you're laughing and you're relating to people. And I think that really helps with the isolation that a lot of us experience as truck drivers. So I'm going to finish making my shake during this very bumpy unload or load. I keep saying unload. And uh, I will have more for you on that later. All right, I just got stopped for the day. I'm at a mom and pop in Iowa. I had to think about that for a minute and headed down to Missouri for a delivery tomorrow afternoon and everything's good on time. I am hoping that my dispatcher is fully like on top of the fact that I need to be back at my parking to go on my home time on Thursday, which I'm pretty sure she is. She's on top of things. So I'm assuming they're going to have me drop off, probably do a pickup on the way back or somewhere close to where I'm at and then just head me back up there, I'm guessing. So I said I would tell you guys about podcasts because I'm going to see the obituary podcast. So let me just tell you a little bit about a little bit about some of my favorite stuff to listen to when I drive. That has really gotten me through the last year plus that I've been driving is all the stuff I listen to. Um, I started listening to Morbid when I first started driving and I just got into it immediately. So Morbid is a true crime podcast put on by... Uh, these two girls, Ash and Elena, they young women, I guess it sounds weird to say girls because they're not kids. Um, <laughs> they're aunt and niece technically, but they're more like sisters because Elena kind of raised Ash because Elena's sister was Ash's mom and she apparently was a hot mess. So <laughs> there's a lot of like little side commentary about that. But I just love the way that they get into cases. I love the way they insult criminals. It's really funny, like the way they insult these serial killers and like the shit that they talk and the language that they use is really funny. But they also do a really good job researching. They just hit their 500th episode, which was a five, they did a five part series on H.H. H. Holmes, which was really, really interesting. I just went back and listened to an episode that if you're a truck driver, you might enjoy. And it's the truck stop killer whose name was Man, I'm gonna have to put it on the screen now. He was a very prolific serial killer. I would recommend listening to that if you're not someone who has a hard time listening to graphic depictions of violence and like sexual sadism and stuff like that. He was kind of up there with like a, a Ted Bundy type of, of killer and it's episode 111 if you want to find it and listen to it. It's interesting hearing them talk about truckers because they, you know, they don't know anything about trucking and they're talking about like the way she was like, I was 
doing research on this episode and I was looking up, you know, the way that they have their, their sleeper and they have like these custom sleepers and da da da. Well, this particular serial killer had a sleeper that was outfitted with a torture chamber basically and he was a uh, sexual sadist who would capture and torture and sexually assault all these young women and then dump their bodies and they think that he may have had hundreds of victims but he only ad admitted to three and he is currently serving two life terms in Illinois actually. A super disturbing case, but the way that they tell it makes it pretty entertaining. Uh, they've done so many awesome cases. So I love Morbid. That's that's one. Then Morbid has like this network of other podcasts that have sort of become part of their family of podcasts. And I think they're all kind of similar in their tones. So, you know, Morbid is, is primarily it's true crime. So a lot of it is serial killers and stuff like that. Sometimes they also do like supernatural stuff, which I'm not as interested in. And then they have listener tales where their fans write in and those are usually super funny and entertaining like they their fans have some crazy stories like the time my mom was friends with a serial killer or something like that dude are you guys having like a lot of flies and gnats in your truck i need a freaking fly trap in here some that shit's annoying so there's that then related to them is obituary that's the one i'm going to see live this weekend and i'm super stoked about it it's madison reyes and spencer henry Side note, Spencer Henry is totally one of my gay guy crushes. <laughs> the other one being Lil Nas X, because he's objectively gorgeous, obviously. I mean, duh. Uh, <laughs> that's a random side note. But anyway, Spencer Henry, Madison Reyes, super funny. They're like best friends, and they talk all about death and death-related things. So I, I guess that's a theme. I like sort of dark, macabre type of stuff. I've always been really fascinated by death, and I think most of us are because it's, it's the total unknown, and there's some stuff that is really like disturbing about it and dark but a lot of the way that they talk about it the way that they get into these deep dives on different subjects like different types of burials they'll do a whole episode on that they'll do episodes about um things that happen to people after they die like death erections and <laughs> hilarious shit and the way that they tell it also is super funny and because they're friends, it's like their friendship and their banter becomes part of what you enjoy about the show and then you feel like you're sort of part of that friendship in a weird adjacent way. I love it. It's so good and I'm really excited to see them live. And the other thing that's really cool about it is when you listen to it enough and you hear so many stories, they also have things that their listeners write in and those are always really interesting. And it sort of takes away some of the sadness and mystery of death and it makes it more like this is a, a part of our existence that everyone has to encounter. And it can take some of that sadness and darkness away from it and even bring some some joy in the experience of like, you know, celebrating a person and remembering them. They read obituaries and a lot of them are really touching, really funny, scathing sometimes. They love a scathing obituary where someone like totally talks about how terrible their parent was or something like that. Doesn't sugarcoat it. That's always interesting. I also listen to Behind the Bastards and it's about various bastards throughout history. Like it, it, it gets into some really interesting stuff. The host, whose name I can't think of off the top of my head, is a, a real history buff. So it gets into like these, again, super deep dives about different figures. So like there's a whole, there's like a four part series on Clarence Thomas, I think. Wow. I grew up during the time of the Anita Hill, Clarence Thomas thing. And I thought I knew about Clarence Thomas, but that dude is next level weird, man. The fact that he's in the Supreme Court is wild <laughs> when you know some of the backstory. So I'd recommend that. Behind the Bastards, Clarence, Clarence Thomas episodes, really weird and interesting. Oh, what else do I listen to? I love audiobooks. I love memoirs. Okay, let me tell you about a couple of my favorites that I've listened to over the last couple of years. One of my, I always recommend this to anybody, even if you're not a, like a necessarily a music buff or if you're not a Red Hot Chili Peppers fan. I was never like a huge fan of that band. I don't hate them, but I've always been a little lukewarm about them. Their earlier shit I think is probably way cooler than some of their more like radio friendly mainstream. The more modern stuff sounded so formulaic to me, but I'm just being a jerk because every time I am judgmental about a band in my head, I'm, I am like, uh, you didn't, when did you sell a million records? Let's talk about your music career. <laughs> uh, 
Lee's memoir, Acid for the Children, I think it won a bunch of awards. It is fucking phenomenal. It is a beautiful listen. He is a brilliant writer, and I definitely recommend if you want to read it, read the audio version. Do yourself a favor, because the way that he tells stories, it, it gives it so much color and beauty, and you fall in love with him as a human being. You're like, I'm glad I share the planet with this amazing person, and he's awesome. The way he grew up, it, it's no mystery why he became the person that he is, and the, the prolific artist, and it's it's just great. Totally recommend it. Uh, that, that was a, an awesome one. Also, Tiffany Haydish, The Last Black Unicorn. I am telling you, <laughs> I talked about it when I was listening to it. And this was like a year ago. I talked about it a little bit in one of my videos because I was, or a couple of videos because I was listening to it over the course of a couple of days when I was driving the flatbed. That also, you have to listen to the audio. You can't just read it because she does all these voices and she is insanely funny. She is self-deprecating. She is the most lovable. She is brilliant. She's one of those people who came from a hard life and made herself a success. And her spirit, I'm getting chills thinking about her. Her spirit will just make you want to clap for her and it'll make you want to try harder in your own life. She's one of those kind of amazing people. I love, I love comedians, you know. Who else? Oh, who else? Uh, I just listened to Viola Davis's memoir, that's heavy. That's intense. Also incredible and deeply inspiring. I very much recommend that. It's a hard thing to listen to. It might be difficult for people who've experienced a lot of trauma um, or like abusive situations in childhood or poverty. The way that she experienced poverty, I've experienced poverty in childhood. Like I always say, it's like it was intermittent. Uh, I realized after listening to her that I have no concept of what real poverty was. And not that it's a competition, but it just makes you realize whenever you're sort of like maybe feeling sorry for yourself or you're feeling like your life has been really hard, when you listen to a story like that one, it makes you rethink your whole perspective and it makes you realize how powerful the human spirit is and what it means to have a work ethic and to work past unbelievable barriers. So I definitely would recommend that memoir. It's awesome. Maybe I'll throw some more in the comments because there's so many more things I've listened to. Memoirs are my favorite. I always have said I want to write a memoir someday. I really do. And listening to other people's memoirs motivates me because one of the things I've realized is that everybody has a story and I think that when you hear the narrative of your own story in your head enough, you, you feel almost this weird thing that everybody already knows what's going on in your head. I know that might sound weird. I, I wonder if anybody else feels like that, but it it's like, oh, no one wants to hear my story. It's, it's not that interesting or it's cliche or it's whatever, but no, it's not. It, like everybody's story is, is unique. And when you hear someone tell it, what it does is it helps you feel like we are connected more. You feel more connected with other human beings because you relate to these things that they've been through and stuff. And it's really cool. So what else? I was trying to think of any other podcasts that I listen to. Another true crime podcast. If you like a more like soothing accent, these two British women, uh, what is it called? Red Handed check that one out. They are so enjoyable to listen to. Their voices are more mellow, like Ash and Elena on Morbid can be a little bit in your face. And uh, these two, on they have these like super soothing British accents and they speak really beautifully and they are really good storytellers and they also tell really interesting true crime stories. So that's another great one that I've really enjoyed. <sighs> are there any other ones? I know there's other ones. I'm. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. I just, this will be the last one because it's getting too long. Okay. I just, my ex-husband actually just told me about this one because we were talking about podcasts and I am so grateful he told me about this. And if you're like me and you grew up as a teenager in the nineties, you absolutely would love this podcast. Or if you're just a music lover, it's called 60 songs. I think it's called 60 songs that made the nineties. I might not be saying that exactly right, but it's something like that. If I didn't I'll, again, write it on the screen, it's going to be annoying to edit this video. It's so good. This guy is a music writer and he's very good. He can be a little, his personality takes a little bit of getting used to. He can be really dramatic about the way he says things, but he is extremely knowledgeable about music 
and musicians. And I, I feel personally, I don't know about you guys, but I've, I've been obsessed with music my whole life. I grew up before the internet, thank God. I listened to a lot of radio as a kid. We listened to the radio constantly. We used to like record stuff off the radio with our little boom box or tape player or whatever and like make little mixtapes so we could listen to the songs we wanted to listen to more than once or like not having to wait for it to come on the radio. He gets into so many backstories like the episode, I just listened to the one about California Love by Tupac. That episode is amazing. The way he, what he knows about Tupac, the way he talks about Tupac is so good. It makes you want to go back and listen to his whole catalog. Oh, also the episode that he did on Rage Against the Machine, Killing in the Name. That was a really intense one too. Like he just gets into so much history about the people who wrote the song, about the musicians, the inspiration behind them. And like in Bone Thugs and Harmony, uh, Crossroads, the history, he gets into all this history about one of the samples in the song and it like helps you understand how the way this song was produced, like the layers of meaning that come into the song that you wouldn't have even noticed if you didn't know that stuff. It's really cool. Okay, that was too long. <laughs> but you should listen to that podcast if you're into music, especially if you grew up in the 90s. Listen to episodes on songs you're not even into because they'll blow your mind. Like there's an episode on a Gin Blossom song I haven't listened to yet. I really do not enjoy the Gin Blossoms. I am kind of like, eh, but I'm going to listen to that episode because I bet it's going to be something really interesting and I'm going to learn things that will give me a different type of respect for music I didn't appreciate, you know? I think it takes a lot of courage for people to be creative and I applaud it and the more life I live, the more I want to embrace all different types of creative forces out in the world because uh, I had this old roommate who was an older hippie lady. She was like 70 and we used to smoke tons of weed together. <laughs> it was great. And <laughs> she was an artist and, and a dog walker, go figure. And But she said something that has always stuck with me. Her name was Sherry. She said, the universe moves in the direction of creativity. And I love that and it has stuck with me. And it's the idea of like, things are always growing and it's a positive idea. So I will leave you with that. This has been too long. <laughs> but uh, there is my sort of deep dive on some of the podcasts I love. Please tell me in the comments any podcasts, audiobooks that you recommend, and tell other people who are reading the comments because all of us who are out here driving, we're always happy to get. I think some of us, I know one person who doesn't listen to anything while he drives, I would absolutely lose my mind. Although at the end of a long day of listening to stuff, I usually need silence for a while. And it's not silent in the truck. There's a lot of noise. So it's like the, the white noise of the road, the sound of the engine and the sound of the uh, wind and all that stuff. So that's all I got. I hope you found this interesting. Please share what you like to listen to while you drive and I will catch you later. Thank you.